the three 10 mil screws that you need to remove are here, here, and then there's another one right back here. On this side of the unit, the 10 mil screws are in the similar place. There's one here, one here, and then another one way back here. Feel around underneath the glass side pieces and find the holes where you can press the plastic side of the Glowforge out. And as you do that, you'll be able to slowly remove the glass side piece from the left side of your Glowforge. On the right hand side of the Glowforge, you will feel underneath where the on off button is. There's a wire connector that you can either remove it beforehand, if you can feel it with your thumbnail and pull the wire down, but be gentle on the wires. It has a little white keyed connector that I'll show you a close up of in a minute. Um, in order to get the right hand side of the cheek the glass off, you need some sort of little flat pry um, tool. Make sure it's not sharp and you wedge the pry tool in between the plastic and the side cheek. pull the side cheek plastic away from the glass. There's a couple of videos that show how to do it if this one isn't um, floating your boat, because this is a little tricky to get the right side off as compared to the left side. And that, you know, the right side comes off. Once you get the plastic separate from the glass, it comes off a little bit easier than the left side. And the on off button you can see has the connector here and your wire connects into the on-off button. It can only go in one way. So if it's not going in smoothly, don't force it. It is a keyed connector. This is what it looks like. And you can just let that off to the side. This is the red connector end that you will need to remove from the end of your laser tube in order to get to the wire that is connected to this end of the laser. This is the wire that powers the laser. Make sure that your machine is unplugged. And the side plastic is very flexible like the other video shows, so it's not too challenging to slide this off. Just be gentle. As you can see here, I still have my Christmas curling wire. I tied it off onto the coolant line on this side so that I still have that little piece of white twine running in the channel underneath the Glowforge in case I ever want to or need to replace this red wire and rerun it through the original space underneath the glass laser. I still have this wire, excuse me, I still have this piece of twine running through the channel. It's tied off on this side and then let me move the camera just a little bit. You can see it is still tied off over here on the coolant line. It's that little piece of white strand right there. So we are using what I'm calling the aluminum hoops. I don't know if that's the right term, but that's what I'm calling these pieces. These pieces covering the glass laser tube, we are using those for cable management to make sure that our cable stays nice and neat and up away from these roller wheels because you do not want your red wire to come in contact with these gantry wheels. It's probably not the right term either, but it'll work. Um, over here, you can see our connector in the middle, and you can see our gantry wheel down here. Our red wire is nice and away from this wire. We have run it up through the, the factory hole in this aluminum piece, and I'm going to move the camera closer so you can see what I'm referring to. Okay, so to get up close and personal, this is where we have run the red wire through. The red wire comes from underneath here and typically goes in the channel underneath the glass tube, but there is a space here in this aluminum tray where you can fit the red wire. And this red, this tray, this aluminum piece here has kind of, a, I wouldn't call it a sharp edge, but it's definitely a 90 degree edge. So we put two pieces of sh heat shrink tubing to protect the wire where it passes through this aluminum tray opening. So it's protected there. And then again, we use the aluminum cheek, I don't know what to call it, hoop, the aluminum hoop um, for cable management. We did not use the black silicone sleeves, the black rubber sleeves, because they're not sized for the Glowforge wire. The Glowforge wire is a wee bit thicker than what this kit is designed for, so you will have to make these, uh, the ends, the openings, larger. 
And as you reassemble your wire, assuming that your split's in the middle, like ours was, like our short was in the middle, you will want to run the wire through over here, through the metal hoop, and then as you've cut your wire and you're getting ready to put it all together, make sure that you put this with a smaller end to the outside and before you start to tin your wire and connect things on it, otherwise you're gonna have to take it apart and put it back together again. Um, and the same thing goes for over here, attach it to the end of your tube with a screw, route your wire through your cable management, make sure that it's um, nice and um, stable, that it's not flopping around. Um, and you'll also want to make sure that as you slide your Glowforge tube back and forth, that this insulation connector doesn't come into contact um, or get in the way of your laser moving all the way to the back of your machine. So you'll before you um, think that you're done, make sure that you put it all back together again and uh, gently with your hands, make sure that your laser moves back and forth and that nothing is in the way of your carriage wheels, your gantry wheels, or your traverse path front to back of your machine. So before you call it done, make sure that your Glowforge runs all the way to the back of your machine and that your splice housing isn't getting in the way or um, in any way interfering with the traveling path of your laser front to back.